guys, it's Lee, and today I'm going to be doing an acting Q&A. Now, you may not know this, but I have another channel where I post monologues and stuff, so I asked that small audience to ask me some questions, and I got, like, a ton, so this may take a while. Also, this will be the last video you see with me with long hair, because I'm cutting it short again. So about here, why do I have deja vu? Um, what? Future me, you figure that out. This is the last video you'll see of me with long hair. I'm cutting it again. I'm not getting this ever again. Like, I never want to, but it's going short. I have them all lined up on my laptop. So let's get into the Q&A. What is the weirdest costume you've ever had to wear? I don't think it was like the costume as a whole, but the first ever like play I did, I was 11 and I had to wear this stupid hat. Now, I'm not saying it's stupid, like bashing on like the culture that the hat originates from, just why does a swan have to wear it? I will insert a picture, but it was, no, that was definitely the worst. I don't think I've had like really bad costumes. I think that was, that's as bad as it gets. But to be honest, I think everybody in Honk had bad costumes so we all looked okay. How did you get started? I started acting at the age of 11 as I said at this theatre company and I pretty much just went from there. I then signed myself up to a few online websites like Star Now and there was one other that I don't use anymore. I think it was called Stars in Their Eyes or Stars in My Eyes. That one was like a lot of money for really bad jobs. I know a few people like really love that website, but it just, it didn't work for me. A few roles I like get now and a few auditions I get now is from like networking from different like plays and different productions that I've been involved in. So people just get in contact with me and they're like, hey, remember working with us? Wanna try again? And I think that's pretty cool to be honest. These two questions are basically the same. Do you have an agent? Do you want an agent? No and no. I am quite happily going solo. I think it is easier for my schedule because I can then pick jobs that fit around college and things that I'm trying to prepare for university and I still want to like focus on university and college work so I think if I had an agent they'd make me do more work than I am capable of doing because you know I still want good grades and I don't really fancy dropping out. Would you consider yourself an actress? Yes, I act, therefore I am. <laughs> I do consider myself an actress because I have done acting jobs and I still do acting jobs and I love acting. However, I feel like I have three careers in life. I feel like I have my, my YouTube, I have my acting and I have the future career that I will go on to have after university. How did you get noticed? I didn't get noticed. I'm not noticed. It's just the people that I work with have noticed me and when they go to work on future things they're like, bring her along. So <laughs> it's not really that I've been noticed but I'm out there, I guess. What has been your hardest role? My hardest role so far was probably Mosca in Volpone because Mosca is a male character. Now that's not the issue I had with it. The issue I had with it was the first production I did with this company, I had like really, really tiny lines. Like if you put all of my lines together, you would probably just about fit it on an A4 piece of paper. Then two years later, I re-auditioned with that company and I got the joint lead role. Uh, if you didn't know, Volpone is like this rich guy who is trying to fake death so that he can get loads of like gifts and stuff so that these people think that he'll put them in their will and then he just gets really rich and then Mosca's like trying to steal the money even though she's just a servant and that was so hard I had like so many lines it was ridiculous when it came to learning it I had like post-it notes of all of my line starters and it literally went all the way around my bedroom it was crazy and some of the post-it notes had like two lines or three line starters on there so it wasn't like they were really spread out it was it was ridiculous yeah i think that was it wasn't like challenging as in getting into the role of mosca i think it was challenging as in this is the biggest part i have ever had <laughs> what was your first onset experience like oh boy <laughs> My first on set experience was an absolute shambles. So we arrived an hour late because we got sent to the wrong place. Like many other people. So we weren't the only ones. I don't know. Like, 
Where do we, how do we get in? But we rock up and my friend, I dragged my friend with me and then she just ended up being in the film. They roped Nia in. She was just gonna sit and watch, but they asked her to join in. So she gets paid anyway, but she's like in a mood about it. And she has been since we got here at like five o'clock. We had blisters and then we missed our trains home. We, we wrapped a little bit late. They canceled all the trains home from the time that we like arrived. There was like three trains that we could have got and all three of them got canceled. So if we'd have left at original wrap time we may have made an earlier train that wasn't cancelled but yeah if you want to watch that i vlogged it and i'll leave it linked below it's quite funny and i i, I highly recommend it but not all set experiences are like that i have had some really great fun on set do you ever run into people you've already worked with yes oh my god the most recent one was actually earlier this year i was on set of this zombie thing and i ran into my friend who i'd done a Midsummer Night's Dream with back in 2014 in the summer. Hi, so I'm dead. This is Alex. She's Hello. also dead. So I was just telling her how I went back to the company and I did Volpone with them. That was like the December before. We were going into like the actors holding area and we just saw each other in the line and then I got to catch up with her mum and her mum is amazing and then her mum gave me a lift back to the train station afterwards so I didn't have to walk and get a bus and that would have been a nightmare. How do I get an IMDB credit? There are many ways to do this. Some short films, some short films on YouTube actually IMDB credit themselves. It all depends on whether the production you are in wants to put themselves on IMDb. I have been part of some that haven't and I've auditioned for some that wouldn't uh, because they just wanted to keep it like either on YouTube or either just for like this uh, short film festival or whatever but it depends. I have an IMDb credit. I plan on getting a few more in the coming year because I have a lot a lot of work lined up. The deal me and my dad have is when I get three credits he is going to pay for IMDb Pro which means I get to run my own IMDb page and I get in contact with directors and all of these castings that you wouldn't normally know about. And it's basically, IMDb Pro is like having an agent without having an agent. What are your favorite acting websites? I do use some others, but my top two are Star Now and Fame Street. They're the ones I've been using from the beginning. They're the ones that I've, well, I stopped using Fame Street for about a year, but I've gone back to it and get a lot, a lot of auditions through those. Also, if you if you go onto like a prestigious acting website that costs like a fortune and you find one of their like, if, if you see a casting call for like a TV show um, and then you're like, oh, I can't, I'm not going to pay like £44 just to have this one audition, go on to Star Now. I guarantee you Star Now will probably have it on there because that's how I found one. Um, the other one I use is Talent Talks, that's where I got my first film job from and I don't pay for them, I have a free profile, but I do apply to all open calls that I can, that I'm eligible for, and I have had some pretty good work from there, so yeah, they're like my top three, I'd say. Another thing you can do is just type in like open casting calls and then like your area, so like if you live in like Liverpool, then just put in like Northwest and just see what comes up. What is the best place you've performed? Why am I even thinking about this? Because there's, there's two. Oh, I kind of hate myself for not being able to choose between them because I think it's obvious to a lot of people which one they would pick. On the 14th of July, 2013, I performed in the London O2 Arena and that was incredible. But then I also performed in the open theatre at the Royal Shakespeare Company in 2014 on August 3rd. And that was amazing and they're like two of my dreams was to play an O2 venue and to be involved with RSC stuff and shenanigans so I, I, I like them both. I like both venues. How do I get started as an extra? Sign up to any online acting website and search extra work. That's what I do. You can also go on to extra specific ones. I think Universal Extras is a good, good website for that. I'm not too sure about their fees. Uh, also, try Casting Collective. I was a member with them for a year. I am just about to renew my membership. Had, like, a few, like, casting calls with them, but I've not had any, like, jobs from them. Um, but I think that's just more my schedule and I wasn't right for the part. But they are so, so good. And you can pencil in when you're not free and stuff and work it around like your own schedule just apply everywhere just 
get on a bunch of websites, make a bunch of free profiles and apply to everything. <laughs> just have a, have a day when you're free and literally just sit down and apply to like a thousand, no, maybe not a thousand. I think the most I've done in one day was 77 casting calls. And I heard back from 18. So that's not bad numbers, to be honest. How do I ace my first audition? Do you mean like first audition so you get a callback or do you mean first audition in general? As long as you are prepared and you are as good as you can be and you get it within the time frame that they ask and you are polite and nice to them, then you should be fine. Because they don't want like some brat who just walks in like thinking they're all high and mighty. I live in a small town, how do I become an actor? I live in a small town and I'm doing it. So get your butt out there and do something about it. That's all I have to say on that. Will you ever get serious about acting? I am serious about acting, but I think you mean like as a career. Probably not, unless I get like, I don't know, something that kicks off my career like, um, is her name Daisy from Star Wars? Uh, unless I get like something like that, I don't think, I don't think I will ever like pursue it as a career because I don't want acting as a career. Ooh, I do, but I, I want to go to university and I want to become a barrister. It's just acting is a hobby that's turned into something so much more and it is one of my passions in life. It is something that I will probably never give up. I will be like in court one day and then the next day I will be like in the middle of nowhere in a field in zombie makeup chasing after a bunch of kids genuinely something that happened if it takes off then i'll see where it goes but i'd like to get through university before that happens so i have something to fall back on not as like i want a plan b or i need a plan b it's just plan b is my plan a like lawyering comes before acting it's just they've somehow managed to overtake each other in the past couple of years but now that i'm getting close to university hopefully they'll go that way again. I'm 20 and I have no experience. Help. Uh, apply to a bunch of different things. I was 14 when I signed up to my first acting website and I had three years of theatre work under my belt before that. So I'd say if you're gonna, the best way to start an online acting profile is to have something to put on it in your experience section. High school plays, regular school plays, um, college plays, little community theatre plays, whatever. Whatever you can get your hands on, just do it. Even if you hate it. Like, I hated my first role because of my costume. So even, even if, like, it's one of the weirdest, wackiest things you've ever done, just get something. Even if it's just one play under your belt or one... I don't know. I don't even know. But just get something to write on your profile and then work will come from it. How do you go from a background actor to a foreground actor? So you mean extra to speaking roles. There are two ways you can do this. You can either wait for a big break to just get straight into the speaking roles or do as much extra work as you can to get comfortable on set and then you can tell when you apply to future speaking roles. You can be like, I have a lot of experience as an extra. I'm good with direction. I do not mess about, I am very hard working and I am focused on the job at hand. And then they'll look at your profile and they'll be like, ah, they do have a lot of extra work. So there's, there's like two ways you can do it. You can either like hope for a miracle. It does happen for a lot of people, but you can either hope for a miracle or you can work to get it. And I'm currently on this path. Would you recommend going to a drama school? Not necessarily. I think it's easier to get into the business if you have but I know a lot of people who didn't and are still amazing actors with amazing work. I don't necessarily think it's necessary, especially if you think that money's the issue. I would just pay for acting classes, especially when you're starting out. Like, just go to acting classes before you join a school or something. Make sure that it's something that you actually want, that you're actually passionate about and you don't just want it for the fame and the money and whatever or bragging rights <laughs> oh arena joseph uk tour rsc total bragging rights no i'm joking i never brag about it 
I'm very, very humble. What is your go-to monologue? Um, the first ever monologue I used, which was Helena's from A Midsummer Night's Dream. How happy some or other some could be. Throughout Athens, I have thought to say she, but what of that? She thinks that so she thought that so she, 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 you know. That one. That is my go-to because it was the first one I ever learnt. It was the, the, the audition that I originally used it for is the best performance of it that I've ever done. And I love it. It has a special place in my heart because A Midsummer Night's Dream was the first like professional play I did and I love it. What's the weirdest thing you've been asked to do in an audition? I got asked to do my monologue like a frog. Yeah, I had to like rib it and jump around whilst reciting Shakespeare. It was a weird experience, I'd say, but it was fun and I enjoyed it. <laughs> the last question is... Do you have after show parties? Oh yes, yes I do. I feel like it's a form of closure, you just need it. Whether you go out for a meal, or you get drunk, or you just do something that just helps you say goodbye to the people and say goodbye to the characters. Like, you just need a form of closure, I think. Even if you've only been with them for like, a few months, you just, you need that closure. Maybe if you've just done like an extra job, maybe don't go partying with the crew, but definitely if you've done a play, just get together and have like pizza or something. But yes, that is it for this week's video guys. Big thank you to everybody who got involved on my other channel. So hi guys, welcome to my actual channel. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big old thumbs up as with me, links will be down in the description, so make sure you go follow me. While you're down there, ask some more questions for maybe a future acting q and I don't know. Subscribe to and see you next time with a brand new video. Ciao. Thank you.